Hi, everybody. So my computer died. So just be patient with us today because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm on the phone. Um, but we're going to talk about humanitarian projects today. And the really important thing to remember is to not worry too much about it. It's going to all come together. But what I'm getting and what I have been getting, and I'm going to read this, is, is a large portion. So when you go to your appointment, so the military will take over. And then about two to three weeks after that, you'll go to your appointment. And this is what I got from my higher self. And once you get there, you don't have to have a whole bunch of paperwork. I, I think it's important that you take a list of the things that you really care about. Um, hang on one second. I don't know how to give you permission. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm the only one recording. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Um, so you're gonna go to the appointment, just take your list. So that's all you need to do, take your list of projects. Make sure that some of them you're actually really going to enjoy, okay? Don't just pick stuff you think is needed. Pick some stuff that you actually would like to do, okay? Um, a large portion of the money will go to the worldwide projects. So I've been getting that there's gonna be huge projects that go on for the entire world. And a lot of them will be countrywide, but then worldwide. So like cleanup, um, making sure the homeless have a place to live, those kind of projects, um, everybody's fed. So the big stuff is gonna go basically um, to whoever is running the world at the moment, okay? And a large portion of your money will go to that. I do get it will be one for one. So a lot of people ask, how much are we gonna receive out of that? I always get one for one. And the, uh, there will be some sort of ET presence. So that ET presence will also be a military presence. There will be military. So you're not gonna go and talk to a banker. You're gonna be talking to a military group and some sort of ET presence. They may be there through some sort of AI or they might just be there in the room. You might not recognize them but they're gonna know who you are and they're gonna know what your consciousness is. So that's important because if you're gonna go buy a hundred Ferraris in a huge mansion, then you may not get the money. <laughs> so just think about that. If this is about other people. You will be receiving money for yourself as well. So I always get that once you have your project money, 10% of that will be for you. So that 10% you can spend on other projects later if you want, um, or you can make sure that you have a proper house and a nice place to live and your family's taking care of all of that. <clears throat> um, keep letting go of your personal baggage. So all of us have accumulated baggage, emotional baggage over the period of time of our life. And it's all those like limiting beliefs, like I'm not enough, I don't deserve money, money's dirty, all of that kind of stuff. Keep letting go of that this whole time until you get to that appointment because it's just gonna make the appointment a lot easier. Um, so there are a lot of different projects on the list that people want to do. And I just want to say, everybody that emailed me, all of those projects are fine. So everything that came through felt really good. One of the first things that's going to happen is the homeless are going to be housed, the animals are going to be cared for, and the elderly are going to be healed. So the people that have been having a really hard time, they're going to be taken care of first. So keep that in mind. 
Um, there are a lot of different projects. Um, we'll probably go through them like as we go through this conversation, but there's also going to be much more leisure time. So once things get really going and you're very busy for a while, try and make sure that you're hiring people to help you, that you're working like 20 hours a week and you're paying yourself as well. So whoever you're working with, make sure they're getting paid. That's really important. And you're getting paid. So your family, if your family is your board of directors for your projects, then make sure they all have an income coming in. Because this isn't about being a martyr, it's about being, you know, helping others, but also taking care of yourself. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to add right now? I have a huge list, but of you know different projects. Okay. Uh, well, Go ahead. Um, something that popped in this morning that people may not have thought about when you mentioned that a lot of us are already six dense beings and that we've come back to help so a lot of people that is their humanitarian project that they are literally the the beings that are helping humanity yeah so it's just a different aspect it's true especially with the builders you know these are young young people and most of them are sixth density so they're here to really just improve the consciousness yeah. They don't have to have some sort of project, even if they're like 25. Yeah, they could work with the project or they could not work with it as long as they're working on their consciousness. That's what matters, really. I would say the one thing that um, the one hang up that I had to get over was thinking that I had to have it all planned out and everything all in place before I met with them. And so it makes sense that, first of all, they will already have probably some projects that maybe are even started already or are just ready for the to, to launch and they just need somebody to step in. Secondly, I think that what is going to be needed immediately might be completely different than we realize, you know what I mean? So having a list of the our strengths, like what we're good at, if we're good at leading, if we're good at organizing, those kind of things are important to have on your list, plus the things that you get joy out of and the things that you've had a track record of doing well. So I think for me, I feel like the whoever you're meeting with, first of all, knowing that the consciousness and the ET presence and so forth, they can they know right away. You don't even have to, if you try to fake anything, you're going to be, uh, you know, in trouble. But basically just be, be yourself and um, share what you what you can do and they'll they'll help you get started probably with something that's critical at that moment and then they'll be there to guide you along with your own projects because you know what i mean how you go about where you get your land where you get your building where you get your stuff but that does that sound right to you guys yeah that's that i do think that we'll have some help yeah. and guidance yeah yeah, yeah because, because also I think um, people are feeling that it's like they've got to do it all. But I think there's checks and balances. So there's stages of every project, depending on what the projects are. You know, I mean, obviously, if you're building, that's a long term project. That's not just, you know, tomorrow it's ready to go. Whilst if it's systems like education and things like that, they can just use existing buildings. Right. Right. Yep. Go ahead, Chrissy. I, I, to actually piggy off of what Shanti was saying, um, you and I, honey, had talked about um, how I was thinking about schools, but now that I'm learning a little bit more, I don't know that it's going to be the same thing th in this year, let's say, that it's going to need to be in 10 years. So um, would we have like some guidance as to how that can help like right now and what it might lead to? down the road, I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think schools are gonna be included in this like lump that they're gonna ask for from your own money. That's gonna be part of like 
one of those worldwide type projects. Um, I also get that it's important to realize that a lot of these projects are not permanent. So if you have a project that's helping the homeless, they aren't always gonna be needing help. So just to kind of remember that, um, depending on what your project is, like if you're gonna create like an artist colony or some kind of creativity, like, I don't know, community or something like that, that's gonna last longer than if you're just helping people make sure that they're fed and they have a home because eventually everybody's gonna have a home and they're all gonna be fed. So you're not gonna need to continue that too much longer because people are also gonna learn how to take care of themselves. How, how, long, do you, how long do you think that process will be of getting everyone out of poverty and you know at a reasonable state of living or a good state of living? I get 2026, like yeah. the world, will be kind of covered at that point. Yeah, so pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick. Yep. And I think that in some countries, like we'll be doing more. So like, you know, people are gonna be taking in Zim, Zimbabwe and Africa and some of these countries that have had such a hard time because they've been so picked on, they're gonna get, you know, a huge amount of help and a huge amount of money is gonna go that way as well because they need infrastructure. Whereas like, you know, the USA or, or Australia, we don't really need so much in the way of infrastructure in comparison. Yeah, so do you see a lot of people traveling to those countries to start all of those? Like, it's not like we're going to just stay in our own country. We're going to go to where people are needed most. Yeah, I think there will be a ton of travel. Um, I think depending on what your forte is, like what you're really good at, you may be going to another country for, I don't know, like a year or something. Like, or you may just be bopping in and out of different countries. You might be starting projects that are similar in lots of different countries. It just really depends on what it is that you want to do. Um, when it comes to like homeless and like, you know, people being fed like gardening and stuff like that, I think those are going to be a big priority. And places like Africa where it's so dry, there's going to have to be big systems put into place. So that's going to be, you know, kind of a big push, I think. A lot of young people, I feel, will go over that way pretty quickly. In regards to a project that, say, would be building or infrastructure, that's all going to be changing. Like, everything that we use is outdated, right? So is that a project that would be kind of on the forefront, or it's going to be a little bit before you can do something like that? I think it will be in a place that has none. So in a place that really doesn't have any, I think it will be, but they're probably going to try and do things that will actually last. But there may be some emergency housing too. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like um, they have this one house that basically comes as like a, not burlap, but like a canvas. So it's canvas, but it's infused with cement. So you put it up and then you spray it down and then it's a house. So I think some stuff like that will get put up just for like emergency housing. Yeah. I think to Chrissy's point, what it really does make sense because A, we're really not sure how our world will look when the people who say they're not, or that are done and don't ascend with us, first of all. So when you have people that are already involved with the school system and teaching and education or, you know, law enforcement or the building and the road system, people who are already good at that, you don't know how many of those types of people are going to be left to do that. So again, I think that's where whoever is behind the scenes, the military and stuff is going to, it's going to be pivotal. I think we can just rest in knowing that they will place us where, where the talents lie. 
and where they they know that we'll be good at. And sometimes I don't think that we know what's going to work the best for us until we get introduced to it. So it's going to be quite the adventure in that respect. Yeah, because I, I get that for one, we don't really know truly what all of our skills are at this point. Like there's a lot more to happen. So it's just, you know, for me, it's about being open to that understanding that we are much more magical than we think we are, right? And we can create- well, That's part of the humanitarian part. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's part of the humanitarian part we're here take us, use us, how we can help you, and we'll all be learning together. So that's, it's gonna be kind of a, a very hectic, very busy, but a very beautiful thing in also. And like Honey says, to be able to have enough time, breathing space really, to talk with your fellow humanitarian and come up with other ideas. And yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, so we'll just have to kind of, I think it's going to be kind of a whirlwind at the beginning. Um, I do think that if you have a certain project that you are going to do, that that will not necessarily happen immediately, just depending on what's going on, um, but it could. So definitely don't like lose sight of that. If there's a certain place that you want to put it, go ahead and like purchase that property. I don't know how property will work in the future either. Like there's a lot of things up in the air, but the main thing is to know that everyone will be taken care of and we'll all be working together. Um, the, and also there's a lot of like mystical, mystifying things that have to do with the humanitarian projects, which are like, you have all these papers you have to fill out or you have um, this business plan you have to create. I don't get any of that. So those kind of things, I know that they, that a lot of people are saying that that's super important, but to me, that feels like the old world. So I don't see that that's going to happen. Just um, Shanti's been getting something that I totally resonate with. So I'm gonna let her tell that little story, um, but I completely agree with her. Like, it's not gonna be that hard. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's still a good thing that people are going through those processes because that's using imagination, right? So you are putting out there what, what you currently think is possible. But as your understanding or knowing expands, things change, right? Is like with with my evolution of my understanding of the projects initially I was like okay I want land I want a place that people can go and heal you know maybe before the med beds and sort of prepare them and then after all of that stuff but then I realized that that would take time and initially we've got there's going to be a lot to do so then I was like okay well I guess I've got to walk away from that and just start trying to understand what it is that we can do that is like an instant help. And I still don't know exactly what that is. But I also got that I don't really need any money because you'll be given what you're, what's needed. So with the Zim and the Dong, et cetera, it will be useful for some, but also it's like understanding that you don't necessarily need to go there and exchange money because ultimately if you're there to help, you're there to help. Right. Yeah. So if you don't have any, if you haven't been able to purchase any, then that doesn't mean that you get left out. No, because it's a consciousness thing as well. Mm -hmm it all comes down to consciousness. And if you're not ready to do anything, then you're not ready. So it doesn't, the money thing doesn't come in at all, really. Right. For me at this point. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's that important. It really doesn't. And I, don't, I think that that is part of the old world too. Like basically we're gonna be manifesting everything in the future. So as we learn how to do that, we might as well start with something that we're manifesting for ourselves and others. 
So maybe that means that you're helping someone else with a project. Maybe you have an amazing project that you present and they do just hand you the money. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of different funds for that as well. So it just kind of depends on who you are and as far as like how you're progressing in your consciousness. Because so many people are completely ready to do this. So honey, what do you um, get or see as far as uh, like notifications as everyone's saying or how, how you're gonna know when this is available to you and you can, you know, go in and pitch your projects or what your plans are. I think it's gonna be announced. So that's what I've been getting that it's gonna be announced. I think they already know who we all are. So unless you've been hiding and you didn't get, you know, you didn't exchange or buy funds. I don't know how to say that. Unless you don't have any Zim and you've been hiding, but just thinking about a project, they're gonna know who you are. And I think they'll either contact you or there's gonna be an announcement. I do feel that there will be announcement um, probably two weeks before. It might happen right after the military take control. So just kind of, you really wanna watch some stuff, <laughs> you know, be aware and because we're not gonna wanna watch a lot of stuff, I think, but at the very beginning, I would definitely watch. Um, but I do think that you'll be contacted anyway, even if you don't watch. So be aware of that. I think that a lot of anxiety has been created around this process. And that hasn't been from the good guys, I would say. So I think that, it's kind of been infiltrated a little bit as well yeah. as far as- I tend to agree with that because whenever we purchased the, the money, the Zim, we um, basically had to give some kind of information, certainly our address, you know, so yes, they would know. So um, can, um, let's see, can I ask a couple questions that I have from an email real quick? The um, the first thing with the humanitarian projects, Kimberly had some questions. Um, will the humanitarian projects continue um, uh, 2027, you know, after, after the ascension? Will they, how long do you take them to, to last? Well, I, I think they're gonna morph. Okay, so, gonna morph. yeah. I think it'll probably just be like everything else, kind of seamless. It'll just lead into another way of new way of life. Yeah. Right. So let's say you're going to create a healing center. Mm -hmm. And that healing center, you want to have it on a piece of land or something, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got all these little like cabins or something around. So people can come and stay and that's your healing center. Mm -hmm. Maybe that will turn into something else. Right. Maybe it'll turn into a community. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be kind of fluid on like, not people are not gonna need help forever. We wanna make sure that everybody becomes sovereign. So the whole process of having a humanitarian project, this being sovereign needs to be built into it. So basically kind of teaching people to be on their own, to be able to handle things on their own doesn't mean they're going to be by themselves but they're going to be a sovereign being so you know if, if they don't get that because that's really important to go into the future and if they don't want to be a sovereign being if they want to remain a victim then that's going to mess up their ascension process so we want to also okay. be conscious of the people's consciousness that we're helping correct okay. Yeah. She asks also, once we ascend, will we stay with our own current family um, who ascends with us? I don't see why that would change necessarily. Most likely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll be traveling and doing stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, after the 2027 ascension and, and ascension has happened and all that, does our life roll over or start kind of start fresh? Is there anything kind of magical thing that happens or 
basically I was well we're gonna feel better yeah. and we're gonna be in the process I think it will release some of our subconscious stuff but people who haven't been working on it and all of a sudden they have a crystalline body they're not going to be all of a sudden like fixed I don't think I think that there's going to be a process of letting go of some stuff still I don't think their subconscious will be wiped clean or anything because then you wouldn't know how to walk or talk or yeah. do anything um, that we're used to doing. But I think it will be easier to begin to let things go. Well, just having every, um, in, by the time it gets to that part of it, everybody who's left pretty much is gonna be in the right vibration. I mean, it's gonna be such a different world to live among people who are nice. You know, they're not out to get you. You don't have to be worrying about, it's just a whole different uh, tribe of people that you're with. So it's, it's really gonna be awesome. And I, I think we need to not overthink it. It's just going to, to evolve into a good place. She um, asks what other kind of, kind of interesting question. She says, will we be able to swim in chlorine or salt water pools when we have a crystalline body? Now, who would have thought that question? <laughs> um, I get, don't do the chlorine. Yeah. The salt water's fine. But that's the same as for now, really. Like if you can avoid chlorine, try and do it. Yeah. Uh, also, going back to the previous question, so next March is a frequency shift. So yeah. you, when you say 2027, there's already a shift, you know, you know, four, what was it four years previous? Yes. So that's going to change everything. So really the hardest part will be between now and March, I'm thinking. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's still such a difference in the the overall frequency. Right. And the only people, the people that will be here after March will be the ones that are still kind of deciding if they want to ascend. So they'll have their crystalline body, but maybe they have some sort of trauma that they haven't released. Maybe they are on the cusp of, do I want to stay here and ascend or is this too hard and I just want to go? So just kind of be aware of that. Um, there's going to be a lot less people that are in the decision-making process about whether they want to be here or not at that point, because we're basically going to be, the majority is going to be the people that have decided to be here. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. <laughs> so, um, and this doesn't really pertain to humanitarian projects, but they will kick in in a massive way at that point. Um, so March of 2023 is when the window of the crystalline body closes. So let's say, and this is late March. So let's say you are, in a city, right? And you have all these people that are all of a sudden asleep. There's gonna be things that we need to do. We need to make sure that the kids are okay. Um, we need to make sure that people that are sleeping get enough water while they're sleeping. I do get that you'll be able to kind of get them up, you know, but they'll almost be like, I can't remember what that's called, but like they just don't talk. You, they, you just guide them to the bed or something. Um, like they will be barely functional. Um, and a lot of us have had some of that already happen to us. So as far as like, we're feeling lethargic, our bodies are upgrading, our ears are ringing your body's aching, you know, that kind of stuff. So they're going to get it all at once. And some people will be fine because they've been upgrading all along. And some people will sleep for, you know, I get up to a week. So you just want to make sure that they stay hydrated and that the little kids are okay during this process. So because if somebody's not awake, so they're not awake, 
and they haven't been working on it, but they're still service to others, then they may have more work that has to happen for their crystalline body than you do. Do you get, do you get the military will go around and check on everyone though? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They'll need help though. So yeah, yeah. yeah. they're going to need some assistance. Um, and I think anybody who's awake needs to, you know, that's going to be our time to really pitch it right then. Yeah. Um, so we'll with the frequency, I think we briefly touched on on the 144,000 resonance, the universal resonance. Mm -hmm. And now this is a subject that, you know, a lot like there's a lot of confusion around. So yeah. you get it. It's a frequency that the earth goes through. Yeah, I always get it's a frequency. I never get, it's like a number of people that go to heaven or that kind of thing. I've never gotten that. I've always gotten this frequency. And that, that happens in March. That's that frequency. I get, yes. Yeah. So you, yeah. you picked that one out. I didn't know that that would be the frequency. Um, and also, you know, if you believe what I believe, and I think everybody in this, you know, little talk believes, we will also have the dome come down on that day. So there will be help from the outside as well. I'm sure that they'll be waiting to come in and help. And, but we just wanna make sure that we're also available because most of us here will be, be okay. We'll be actually okay to do something, so. You guys have any more questions? Should we list off all the um, humanitarian projects? I don't know if, you guys, if they need ideas. So if you guys need ideas, so some of them that were mentioned in the emails were like elderly with children, animals and kids like participating in some sort of like therapy because you know animals are great for children, art retreats and schools, Alternative building styles, that is going to be huge because just like Chrissy said, that's we're going to need to start to learn how to build something in a different way because we don't want the same kind of, kind of, uh, I would say junky houses that we've been building, you know, with all these different layers and yeah, so at least right. we'll touch it. <laughs> and, also, and also moving away from the use of trees, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do get that as well. Um, there are certain things I would look into. Um, there's something called foam concrete. You could look into hempcrete, earth bags. There's a lot of different kinds of things that we could start with. I think eventually we'll get even more exciting, you know, ideas and those will come from, I get the Tartarians will give us a lot of ideas. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Do you okay. get that um, things will be built a lot quicker? I don't know, like 3D printing or what, I mean, how we would be going about doing that? Yeah, I think they will. And I think eventually we'll learn how to build with frequency. So I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but I do believe that the pyramids and some of the walls like at Machu Picchu and stuff like this, um, where you can't even fit like a piece of paper in between the blocks. Those were frequency created. So yeah, I do think we'll eventually have that. Um, I don't think we'll get it right away. So that'll take a little time and maybe we'll get help building that when it's time you know, but I think that that method has been active outside the stone. Yep. And also the replicators, <clears throat> you can probably put building material in and get new composite of some sort. Right, right, exactly. I think that garbage will be utilized at first. There are a lot of garbage will be put in the replicators. I do get that we probably won't have individual replicators for a while, probably till like 2030. 
But as far as replicators for projects, I bet those come a lot sooner. So um, food is gonna be a huge thing. Somebody showed me a tower. It was basically like in the kitchen and it was a tower of food. And it, I think it was hydroponic, brilliant. Everybody's gonna need to know how to grow a little bit of food for themselves, even if they're in an apartment, like so they can grow some of their lettuce and you know, just some of their veggies. I think there's gonna be a lot of dried food that has been set aside for everyone and a lot of local food that gets, you know, grown. So that'll be another project. Uh, and what uh, about and what about introduction of uh, new, more nutritious foods that can yes. be grown at home? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might only need, go ahead. You might only need uh, one piece of fruit, and that's literally all all your health nutritional needs. Yeah, I think eventually we'll get there. I think that our habit of eating more won't go away right away but I think it will start to subside. Like our body will just not care about it. Our new crystalline body. Um, I think that we'll probably start with heirloom vegetables and then we'll be given, there are gifts. So there are gifts on those arcs. And I do believe that some of that is seeds. So those arcs that are talked about with like Dr. Michael Sala, I do think that there's some pretty amazing seeds in there. Um, a lot of healing centers. I put down hemp growing and processing because I think that clothes are gonna be kind of in a transitional phase. So as we kind of get forward, and, you know, as a couple of years go by and we haven't had any new clothes for a while, I think we're gonna learn how to grow hemp and make clothing and toilet paper and who knows if we're even gonna use what we're gonna use. But if we need things, I think we'll have some kind of hemp and processing. Um, med bed clinics. So I do get that the military only will have those at first, but they will quickly be screening people to have other med bed clinics. But I think that will go through the military. There'll be some kind of process that you go through. I feel like that will be one of the most complicated processes, um, you know, because it's kind of a complicated, they wanna make sure that everything remains free. That's what I'm getting. Um, uh, sorry, how long do you see that process taking? I think once their clinics are open, so once the military clinics are open, which I get is another about three weeks um, after they take over, I get four to five weeks and they'll start screening people to talk to them about clinics. So it's something you wanna bring up when you go in and then you get on a list. And then I feel like there's gonna be some training. So that's gonna take a little longer for people but it's still possible. And we're gonna have truly healthy restaurants. Somebody talked about that. And yes, I do think that. And activity spaces for people to come together will be another, that's gonna be a great thing because we need to learn how to um, interact again. Because all we do is electronic interaction. <laughs> so, <laughs> That will be good. Zoom free. <laughs> yeah. So. And what about and what about like starting foundations that can help a whole network? So yeah. yeah. I just so you kind of have infrastructure, you have a hundred people in your foundation that help with stuff, projects or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'll happen as well. So the the main thing is, is you want to not burn yourself out completely. You know, everybody's been waiting and waiting to help. And just don't wear yourself out completely and then can't help. Because a lot of us think that we have to do it all. And actually we need to hire people to help us. 
So make sure you're giving an income to others while you're in this process. Yeah, yep. one, th one thing I've found in this whole process is my understanding of being in flow. So nothing should seem hard, like it all just happens naturally. So keeping that in mind, that if, it, if it's really a struggle, it's not the right way to go. It should all just be a natural kind of evolution, really. Yeah. Yep. And I was thinking like 20 hours a week anyway. So, you know, you do have time. Maybe not initially, but sort of break it down to that. So everyone, so you have more people, but doing less. Right. Exactly. Did you have something you wanted to say, Chrissy? I'm spinning. I can't unmute. Oh, you're unmuted. You're talking. Oh, it's not showing on mine. Okay. <laughs> it said that it's not working and it's just spinning. Um, I was just gonna <laughs> I was gonna ask if um so say this, you know, funding and stuff starts to come through quickly, like we're hoping. Um my hope was that we could get going on some of this and that would maybe help in the awakening process. Do you see that? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, it will help people kind of have a balance because a lot of people are going to be awakening to something really ugly and they're going to be seeing a lot of very ugly stuff. So to be also volunteering or being paid to do something that's beautiful and creating the new world. That's a brilliant thought, Garcia. Brilliant. Yeah, I like creating uh, think tanks where people can, you know, you can get, you know, a whole load of people together and just create yep. basically. It'd be pretty cool. Yep. That would be great. Does anybody else have any um, anything to say about it? No, just kind of, so all I'm going to say is just kind of take it easy. So right now is your time to rest and pretty soon you're going to be busy. So um, I do think that people who are doing projects will probably get into a med bed fairly quickly, especially if you're not doing well health wise. I think that, that will be a high priority because they need people to have a good, you know, health to get out there and actually, you know, do what we need to do. Um, I think there will be a lot of help for us. It may be kind of chaotic at first, I'm getting, but we're all gonna work together and this will make us all stronger. So just kind of look forward to it and don't do go with the flow. And we're gonna manifest our future right now, so. Just kind of think about what is going to make you happy and what do you think will make other people happy as far as projects go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just a reminder that like, if you're not sure exactly what you want to do, just sit with what makes you excited or joyful or, you know, anything you think about that makes you really, really happy. Because I yeah. like, even though I'm not sure of exactly what I want to do, I have, you know, 10 things that make me really happy. Exactly. Yeah. Because ultimately, this is about what you're bringing to the world. Because your person that is, there's only one you, and there's only one perspective that comes from each person. And so you may have an idea that nobody else thought of. So just kind of give yourself a little credit and do what feels really good to you. We will be doing some more basic things at first, but eventually it's gonna morph into a lot of really beautiful projects. So, yep. Thanks Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I have to figure out how to end the recording. <laughs>